that is a huge shift. More importantly than just extending our lifespan is that we're finding that it's almost the emergence of a new phase of adulthood where people are still healthy. We have all had certain expectations about when people should exit the workforce and we have this arbitrary age of 65 and that age was decided, I don't know, 50 years ago and we're still stuck with the old idea about what 65 means. The challenge when you're going through a cultural revolution is that you're always in a period of time where there's old thinking and new thinking that exists side by side. The image that a lot of people have when they think of our older years, of course, are people who um, need to spend some time in uh, more institutional care in nursing homes. You know, the reality is a minority of people, uh, particularly those in this third age, that, that they still are active and healthy, that doesn't depict what their everyday experiences are. We actually looked at three or four longitudinal data sets, cognitive abilities, mental health, emotional health, and physical health over the period from age 65 to age 79. And what we found is that there are some declines, but they're not precipitous. They're not jumping off the bridge declines. And that even at the end of the 70, at the 15 year period that we looked at, people were still healthy and well enough to do most anything that they wanted to do. Jobs have changed. So the old ways we used to measure who's most productive at work depended on really the kinds of jobs where much of the, the labor was more physical in its nature. But the reality is most of today's jobs are either thinking jobs, they're interpersonal jobs, and they often perform just as well, or in some cases maybe a little better on some of those tasks. talk to employers and they say that older workers are more reliable, that they have a good old-fashioned work ethic, um, that they're good with customers. Employers know that, but oftentimes they make the misassumption that an older worker has one foot in the workplace and one foot in retirement. People will say things like, well, you can't teach old dogs new tricks. The reality is that when older adults have opportunities to learn new things, for example, at the workplace, opportunities for training and development is one of the most important predictors about job satisfaction and engagement. Social Security is a very successful program, and indeed many people would suggest that it is uh, probably the most important factor that has reduced the number of elders in poverty. That being said is that uh, for most people it is a not a sufficient um, amount of money for people to live or live comfortably certainly throughout the retirement years. Right, that if you're still working at 65, there's something wrong with you, you're being selfish, you, um, you need to start thinking about getting out of the way so that younger people can move in. You can look at it that way if there's a finite number of jobs, but the reality is oftentimes that the jobs that our older adults are holding either are not jobs that younger adults are at that point ready to assume, uh, or in some cases may not want to assume. But what we see in the data is that it, it's, not, it's not a zero-sum game, that when older workers continue to work, it doesn't take away from jobs that younger people are going to get. Today's younger adults indeed are having a hard time finding work, uh, but it is really a factor of a very difficult economy. Mm -hmm.